Hi and welcome to the fifth spotlight video for the RoboCup Humanoid Soccer Competition. Today the most important topic is probably the submission deadline, that is tonight. So last week we did send out the third and final call for participation for both the Humanoid Soccer Competition and the Humanoid Research Demonstration. There were no substantial changes in them, it was mostly a reminder of the upcoming submission. And the submission deadline, as I said, is today. So if you want to participate either in the soccer competition or in the research demonstration and you have not entered your data in our submission system, please make sure to do this until tonight anywhere on Earth. If you want to submit to the virtual humanoid soccer competition, you really only need to provide basic team data. No robot model or anything is required at this point in time. If you want to submit to the research demonstration, you do need to submit a short paper around four pages that describes your research demonstration and also a short video to demonstrate what the research demonstration is about. When it comes to the development that we conducted over the last week, the most important to talk about is the game controller. We have released an update of the game controller yesterday and now the game controller can handle all information from the auto referee that is necessary to enforce the entire loss of the games that we currently have for the virtual competition. You can already find the updated version of the game controller in our official Humanoid League TC repository. Uh, please check it out if you find any bugs or anything that's not working as expected or you feel like there's any functionality missing, don't hesitate to open an issue in the official repository. There are still some important updates to come. Some of them are minor and more on the structure of how to launch the game controller, but one is major and important for teams. And this is the possibility for teams to change which robot is the goalkeeper in the game. Because it can happen that a robot receives a red card, for example, and is removed from the game, teams should be able to change which robot is the current goalkeeper. And this can be done in any stoppage of the game. In the normal competition, this is just requested by the robot handler. Since we don't have a robot handler and the games need to be played fully autonomously, we need to create a different opportunity for teams to communicate this information. We have already decided that this information is not going to communicate it to the auto referee, but to the game controller. So any robot can decide that it wants to be the uh, current goalkeeper of the, of the team. And we will provide an implementation of how teams can send this information to the game controller in the near future. So we will release more information as soon as we have them available on this particular update that's still to come. But other than that, all changes that are still to come are supposed to be minor, but the overall implementation of the game controller is supposed to be ready at this time. This was already all I had for the past week. So let's look into what is upcoming this week and over the next couple of days. So apart from the submission deadline that is today, we will also release the new version of the robot model specifications. Please pay close attention to it because we have updated the information on what files need to submit for the upcoming deadline on April 23rd. So on April 23rd, you need to submit a first version of your robot model if you do want to play with a custom robot model for our competition. So we've now updated information on what exact files you need to submit and also what we will pay attention to in the review and what the other teams are supposed to pay attention to when they are peer reviewing. So please make sure that you read this for knowing what you need to submit, but also make sure that the people you have uh, put in the system as reviewers read this document to know what they need to be looking for. What is also going to come in the next days is that we will send a notification of acceptance to all teams registered for the virtual humanoid soccer competition, because for a soccer competition this year, we decided that all teams who apply will be admitted. So you will receive the notification of acceptance very soon. And in this email, you'll also receive the registration code that you need to officially register your team with the 2021 RoboCup tournament. So stay tuned for this. This email is supposed to come in the next days. We also expect to have a preliminary and limited version of the auto referee ready to be released in the next days. 
So this would be a simple version that can walk you through a simple game that has not um, more sophisticated game interruption states, like for example, free kicks, but they can already go through ready, set, play, and also um, uh, count scoring goals. And we so hope that this is gonna be ready for teams to test within the next days. So Robotics continues working on the full implementation of the referee that also has this game interruption I just mentioned, allows for yellow and red cards and also supports knockout matches. Right now we are only supporting normal or round robin matches. So this will also be announced in the forum once this is ready for teams to test out. Please note that this is, as I said, only preliminary version, so there may still be substantial changes made to this auto referee code. And then the other thing that's going to happen this week is that the technical committee is going to meet in this week and we'll take some important decision for how to proceed with the organization of the virtual soccer competition. Particularly, we will take the decision on where the tournament will actually be hosted so that we can release this information at the beginning of the week after. On April 19th, we will release the hopefully final version of the rulebook and also the final version of the API specifications, which is the API that handles the communication between the robot control software and the robot model on the field. Please be reminded that you cannot write your own WeBots controller for your models. You are required to have your software that controls your robot run independently in a Docker image. And this can only communicate and receive sensor updates as well as give motor commands to the robot model on the field while the official API that has been implemented by Cyberbotics. And we hope that this final document for this is released on April 19th. We will also release a second version of the server infrastructure requirements. So in this document, you will find the decision on where exactly the tournament will be hosted. And we hope that we'll be able to commit what that means for the specifications of the instances that the robot control software for Teams is running on. So specifically the um, CPUs and GPUs that will be available to Teams during the competition. And then just an outlook in the future, on April 23rd, we have the deadline for Teams to submit the first version of their robot models. As always, you're welcome to come to our office hours tomorrow between 9 and 9.30 and 5 and 5.30 Central European Summer Time. And we'll send out a newsletter letter with all the other important information on Thursday this week. And then I'll see you next week with hopefully more updates on the decisions we've been taking during the TC meeting this week.